Jesus. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. If the Lord has been good to you, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Today, many persons may be in the house. Hallelujah. Or even watching by television. Glory to God. You're going through a situation that you think God has not showed up as yet. Oh, glory to God. But we are here to tell you in the name of Jesus that even when it seems as if he's four days late, hallelujah, he will be on time. Glory to God. Just praise up as we minister in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Watch. 
Lord. We want to remind you this morning, he's on time and he's still God. He's God all by himself. He is God alone. Hallelujah. 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 You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your
Somebody give God praise in this place. Somebody bless Jesus. Somebody bless Jesus. Open up your mouth and bless Jesus. Open up your spirit and bless him. Open up your spirit and bless him. Open up your spirit and bless him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Come on, let the rivers flow in this place. Let the rivers flow in this place. Open up your mouth. Let the rivers flow from your belly. From your belly. Open up your mouth. Let the rivers flow. Let the rivers flow. Let the rivers flow. We worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. Your glory is in this place. Your glory is in this place, oh God. We don't need to try. We don't need to struggle. We don't need to. We just need to stand still. We just need to be still and know that you are God. Your glory is in this place. I want everybody to lift your hands up. I want everybody to open up your mouth. I want everybody to let the rivers flow from your gut, from your belly. I want everybody to know that healing is breaking forth. It's not about to, but it is really. Open up your mouth and release your prayer. Jesus. 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 Somebody worship him. Go ahead and 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 worship. Go ahead. No devil can be comfortable. In this place. Your glory is in this place, Father. We don't want to lose ourselves in the current of your flow. We recognize we're nothing. When we enter into your holy of holies, we recognize how awesome you are and how much we are nothing. We just want to stand still and watch you move. We just want to let you be as you are. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. Somebody open up your mouth one more time for me. And just let your glory out. Let your praises out. His glory is here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me greet bring honor to whom honor is due let me greet your bishop dr delford davis and his wonderful wife minister petrova davis let me greet all the ministers and everyone here that comes to worship about a month ago i released a song called god is moving and I'm going to do that song right now. And it goes, before I wrote this song, I saw you uh, going through your own tests, going through your own trials, going through your own valley, climbing your own mountains. But what I saw was that I saw a lot of people losing faith because they're not seeing physically what they want to see or what they have desired to see. I see a lot of prior mothers becoming weak. I see a lot of prior mothers giving up. I see a lot of mothers who have been praying for their sons becoming weak because they're not seeing in their own time what they've been praying for for years. I see a lot of people saying to you, when the world you're waiting on God for, when you've been trusting him for 10 years and him not coming through, why are you holding on? And I see a lot of people becoming weak. But what I saw underneath all of that was God moving. And 
And the Lord brought this song through my spirit. He said, get it out and remind them that I am still in control. Something is happening. Something is happening. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Bring it up for me. Hallelujah. Let me see you wave your hands. Hey. There is a remnant called by his name. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the power we carry inside on the potter's wheel. Being prepared. And though we're tested and tried, your victory is sure. All creation waits in desperation. They know there's got to be more. While the move of God's glory is set in motion, be ready, prepare your heart. God is moving. Be ready for His glory. God is moving. Be ready for His glory. Ready or not, no man can stop the move of God in the earth. Jesus, Jesus, no listen, Satan is busy trying to steal your attention, for if you discover who you are in God, no demon can keep you bound, something is happening. A mighty awakening. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Order is coming to God's house. All creation waits in desperation. They know there's got to be more. While the move of God's glory is set in motion. Be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. God is Jesus. Be ready. Bring the truck up on it. Come on. For his glory. God is moving. My God, my God. You got to know. Be ready for his glory. Ready or not. No, no, we can stop the move of God in the air. God is moving. Oh, when the rain falls, he who is ready, to him it will be a blessing. If the rain falls and we're not ready,
se move, se move, se move. Say it one more time, se move, se move, se move, se move, se move, se move, move. Get your house in order. For what God is doing, no man can stop. Lift your hands and say, Father, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. Say, Father, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. Yeah! It's moving. Somebody worship him in this place. Ready or not, no man can stop the move of God in the air. God is moving. Ready or not, no man can stop the move of God. Turn to your neighbor for me and gently squeeze that hand for me. Turn to your neighbor for me. Hold on that hand and look in them face and say, Just one more mile. Just hold on to that neighbor hand. Gently squeeze it and tell them you're not alone in this. You're not alone in this. You're not alone in this. Say, I'm with you. I'm with you. Say, I'm with you. I'm with you. Say, You're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. You shall live. You shall live. Come on, hold on to that neighbor and say, You're gonna get over this. You're gonna get over. 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 Don't let go. Don't let go. Gently squeeze that hand. Don't let go. Let them know that you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone, girl. You're not alone, man of God. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. They shall bear thee up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but they will not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. You are the head and not the tail. You are blessed and not cursed. You are above and not beneath. You are blessed in Jesus name. You are blessed in Jesus name. You are coming out you're coming out! You're coming out! Don't let go of the hand. Don't let go of that hand. Don't let go of that hand. Don't let go. Hold that hand the same way. Jesus. Hallelujah. You're coming out. You're coming out. Some of you have felt alone. Some of you have felt alone. You know we can be in a building of thousands of people and still feel alone, but you're not. Drop, go that hand again. Hold that hand again and gently squeeze it and say, you're not alone. 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 Say, I'm with you. I'm with you. You're not alone. You're not alone. I'm with you. You're not alone. You're not alone. You know, I'm not satisfied with the holy place. I'm not satisfied with the second level. I want to get into the whole list of holies. And I'm challenging you today. Don't worship to please you. Don't worship from a feeling place. Don't worship for goosebumps. 
Worship when you don't feel like it. Worship when them tell you to shut up. Worship when you don't feel like anything is turning. Worship when it don't look like it's coming together. Worship when God... My destination is in the holies of holies. I'm not going to stop. I'm not... Go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and worship him. Hey, hey, hey. Go ahead and worship. Hallelujah. Sitting right here. Thinking of you, only you, you on my mind, you in my heart, but still I feel that we're so far apart. Lord, I feel so empty. I need to know. Because I prayed and part of my heart. What can I do to get close? Can I get close? Close to you, close to you, <laughs> closer to you. Can I get close, close to you? I want to cry, I want to scream, but I don't want to die, before I draw close alone to you, my heart is beating fast, my hands are shaking, Jesus. Watch me, but I still wait. I'll receive my faith, yet I'm still eager to be drawn. Can I get close? Close to you. Close to you. Closer to. Come on, you sing, you sing. Help me say, can I get close to you? Close to you. Closer to. One more time, one more time. Lift your hand and say, can I get close to you? Somebody help me say, oh, oh, oh. lift your spirit. Can I get? Oh, yeah. I 
Hallelujah. Closer. Closer to you. One more time, sir. Can I? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, you and him alone. Just you and him alone. Forget about Kevin for a while. Just you and him alone. Say, can he needs your attention? He's been waiting for a sound from your belly. She's a one more time, can. Come on.
Jesus, 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 I come to There's a window that's been open in this place. There's a window. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. You've been praying too long to miss this. You've been praying too long to miss this. There's a window open. There's a passage. Say, oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus.
worship and worship. What a day, what a day, what a day, what a day. Lord have mercy. The Eagle Eye Prophet chapter 53 and the first maybe five verses. Isaiah for those who do not know. Isaiah chapter 53. A prolific question is asked here in verse 1. Who hath believed our reports? And to whom is the harm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Under the theme today, as the Holy Spirit has already ministered to all, I come to you under the theme, there is healing for all. Tell your neighbor, there is healing for all. Precious Lord, we look to you now and ask that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to us. Indeed, you have touched lives in this audience, in television audience, by the internet, and later by radio. I ask in the name of Jesus... That thou wouldst anoint thy servant and make the word of my mouth quick and powerful as two-edged sword. May it cut and heal, may it save, deliver and set people free. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout amen. amen. There is no doubt as to whether or not the Holy Spirit has been ministering across this congregation. How many here have really and truly felt the tug and the touch of the Holy Spirit as he moved across this place? In my last message I spoke concerning the general presence of God, the presence that is general to all people. And I heard the minister as he ministered, he spoke of just like I said on Saturday night, not wanting to be in the general place or the holy place, but he wants to be in the holy of holies. And there you accommodate and enjoy not just the, just the presence, the general presence that all would have felt, but you have a personal presence with a personal anointing that minister to you concerning your personal call and your personal gifting. Lift your hand and say, Lord, that's where I want to be. Hallelujah. There is healing for all. And I'm glad the Holy Spirit has already begun that work. The text here in Isaiah chapter 53 it speaks of Jesus Christ, our model sufferer. And we have just concluded the period of his passion, death, burial, and resurrection. In all of that, he was indeed our model sufferer. He offered himself so that he can secure for all his people 
everything that was lost through Adam's transgression. So all the things that were lost because of Adam's transgression, Jesus Christ, our model sufferer, gave himself so that we might be redeemed. And having been redeemed, we can reclaim all the things that we have lost. And I do trust that our convention theme would have empowered you sufficiently so you realize that it's time to go and possess your possession. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, I present to us today as the only, I mean the only one who has the capacity and has the ability and has the resources to supply all the needs of all people at all times. There is just no one that is comparable to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul declares him, declares him in this way. He said he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think according to the power which worketh in us. Give him praise. His ability, his capacity, his resources are unlimited. And that's the reason why today you cannot compare him with any other. He is higher than the highest and greater than the greatest and stronger than the strongest indeed. Mightier than the mightiest wherever you are today. Whatever the circumstance of your life, it doesn't matter how many persons are suffering that very faith, God is able to come through for you and you and everybody at the same time without disenfranchising anybody. He is that kind of God. Somebody praise me if you love him here. No wonder we sing we serve a great big wonderful God. Always victorious. Always watching over us. I serve that great big Wonderful God. Somebody call his name in the house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give him praise again. So his supplies are unlimited. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. But my God shall supply some of your needs. Oh glory to God. Not some but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Not according to your ability. Not according to your capabilities. Not according to your resources. Not according to your earning power. God is able to go beyond your earning power. Your earning ability. And supply your needs supernaturally. So that it marvel you. And it marvel those around you. Do I have any witnesses in this house today? Who would testify that indeed God is a need supplier. God is a way maker. God is a door opener. God is a bridge builder. God is a problem solver. God is a burden bearer and a burden lifter. Do I have anybody here today who can subscribe to those statements? That's the God we serve. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Somebody shout in the house. Shout and praise him in the house. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Tell your neighbor, he is my God. Tell them that's my God. Ask them, is he your God? Glory to God. What a wonderful Savior. Somebody give him another praise. So this message today is intended to bring comfort to all of God's people. It is intended to give an assurance to all of God's people that regardless of what has happened, regardless of what is happening, God is in touch with your situation. I did say God is in touch. Many people are out of touch, but God is in touch. 
Give him praise, somebody. You would see from time to time persons in various communities or parishes or districts. They mount all kinds of demonstration, amen, seeking to get attention, the attention of their member of parliament, their counselors, maybe the prime ministers, prime minister, because they seem to be out of touch with what is happening, where their roads are concerned, where their water is concerned, on all kinds of social ills, amen, they can be out of touch. The PM can be out of touch. Your MP can be out of touch. Your counselor can be out of touch. Indeed, your pastor can be out of touch. But I got good news for you today. I said I got good news for you today. The Lord Jesus Christ is never out of touch with your situation. His eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Beholding the evil and the good, he knows where you're hurting, he knows why you're hurting, he knows when you're hurting, he knows what caused you to be hurting, he knows who caused you to be hurting, and he can deal with everything for square. Oh, glory to the name, oh God Almighty, I feel the Holy Ghost coming on me. Somebody touch your neighbor and tell them God is in touch. God is in tune. He knows what's happening. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So he told me to comfort you today. He told me to bring you a word of assurance that regardless of your state, regardless of your condition, Regardless of your circumstances, I don't care how ratoon it has become. God is still in touch with your situation. Oh, I feel like praising him. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long it has been there. He has told me to tell you, not your neighbor, but you. You, I mean you, that person who have been looking to God incessantly, Powerfully, faithfully, fervently, and you have asked God many questions. Why me, Lord? How long, Lord? I come to tell you today that He has told me to tell you that He is in touch with your situation. And He said He may not have come when you thought He would, but whenever He shows up, He's always an on time God. Four days or four days, it makes no difference. When he comes, he's an on-time God. Tell your neighbor that he's an on-time God. Four days is not late. Four years is not late. Four months are not late. God is always. Woo! If you ask a man in John 5 who sat for 38 years, the man would tell you, my God, when Jesus showed up, I did not even remember that so long I sat here. My deliverance was so real. My deliverance was so present. My deliverance was so mighty that I did not even remember that I'd been here for 38 years. Somebody praise God in this house. Oh, lift up your hands and call the healer. Lift up your hands and call the deliverer. Hallelujah. So regardless, I did say regardless of your condition, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the state of your being, there is healing for all. Did you say all, Bishop? No, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how long I've been going through this. Certainly I do not know. But does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song? When the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. I'm asking a question. Tell your neighbor the answer for me, please. 
Does he care? Enough to be near. Does he care when I have tried and failed to resist some temptation strong? Does he care when I say goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? Yes, he cares. I didn't read it in the book. I know it from experience. Because he came through just when I needed him most. Oh, God Almighty. Just when I needed him most, he came through. Oh, he's the on-time God. So today, while persons of need for various types of healing, some of you might be concentrating on one aspect of healing, maybe physical healing, financial healing, but God gives healing to all and for all conditions. Are you there with me? So today there is spiritual healing for the soul. And I hope some of you would have been healed by now. With the wave of the anointing that swept across this house. God, some of you must have been healed spiritually by now. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. He gives physical healing for the body. Spiritual healing for the soul. He gives financial healing for your life and your family. He gives social healing for your marriages and all kinds of social heals. He gives psychological healing for the wounds in your mind. Those wounds, those scars that have been there for months and years. And they prick you ever so often. Psychologically you are wounded because of things that have happened in your life. And dear God, you just seem not be able to go over that hurt. I come to tell you today in the name of Jesus there is healing for all oh glory oh glory so have no fear tell your neighbor have no fear mm. have no fear because I believe wrapped up here in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 which says but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed I believe it is a complete healing package that Jesus secured when he died on Calvary if it's not a complete healing package, then the work would have been incomplete. Something else would have had to be done. Someone else would have need to do something else. But when he cried out in John chapter 19 and verse 30, It is finished! Nothing was left to be done. Every stone was turned. Everything that we lost through Adam's transgression, Jesus said, through my redemptive power, through the power of the cross and the power of the blood, everything can be reclaimed. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that today? Everything is wrapped up in Isaiah. 53.5, where the healing package is concerned. It's a comparable to a, a well-balanced meal. Amen. Where you get all the nutrients from, all the vitamins and everything that the body needs. Amen. That nutritionist can put a meal together and that one meal supplies to the body just about everything that it needs. That's the God we serve today. An all-purpose God. The one-stop shop Jesus. When you stop at Jesus' supermarket, you don't have to look next door. You don't have to go anywhere else. Because all that you need. God, am I talking to somebody here? Lift your hand and say, all that I need. Tell your neighbor all that you need. Hallelujah. Were it not so, 
the apostle Paul would have borne false witness when he said, My God shall supply all your needs. Oh, praise God. Not through earthly material resources, but out of His, His riches, which is in glory. Come on, somebody. And heaven knows no lack. Heaven has no want nor no need. Heaven's supply is an inexhaustible supply. Give him praise and glory. Climatic condition doesn't alter what heaven wants to do. He does it in summer. He does it in winter. He does it in spring. He does it in autumn. He does it whenever he pleases. Geographical location doesn't limit God from doing what he wants to do. He does it anywhere in the world, anytime. Talk to me somebody. Family heredity has nothing to do with when God wants to do something for you. Even if you are in a house of idolatry. But you are connected to God. God steps over idolatry, steps over idolaters and bless you like he did to Abraham. He said, hey, Abraham, get out of that. I want to do something for you, but I can't do it right there. I'll take you out and bless you. So when God move out some of you, don't, don't question God. He knows what he's doing. When he moves you out, he moves you out so he might move you in. Not to leave you in the wilderness, but to bring you into a large place, to bring you into a wealthy place, to bring you into a prosperous place where you can experience what Minister David said in Psalm 1 you be like the tree, not a seed dropped, but a tree planted. Are you not getting this? Not a seed scattered somewhere, but a tree planted. Amen. By choice, by design, by amen. By precision, the, the soil was chosen, the seed was chosen, the place was chosen, the time was chosen. As a good farmer knows when to plant what and where. That's the God we are talking about. You can't fatter him. You just need to follow him. Tell your neighbor, don't try to fathom God. Just follow him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Isaiah said, don't worry. It doesn't matter what your condition is. It is wrapped up in that package. And when God gets ready to unwrap that package, amen, and to release in you what he has for you, nobody can stop it. Nobody. There are some folks who think, some religious folks, they think they have a monopoly on God. And they can manipulate God and tell him who should be blessed and who should be cursed. Are you not with me? Those who me should show divine favor. And those whom he should despise. But honey, you can't direct the mind of God. He has no advisor and he needs no advisor. He has no counselor and he needs no counselor. He is God all by himself. And take this from me, whether you believe it or no. If persons could manipulate God, some of us would have been buried six feet six long time. Some of us would have been messed up long time. Because you'd be surprised to know that there are some folks who are waiting to see you fall. Waiting to see your destruction. Waiting to see reproach. Waiting to laugh. David declared. David declared that the wicked watch at the righteous. And to gnash upon him with, with his teeth. But God shall defend him. And God shall deliver him. Lift your hand and say defend me. Yes. Say deliver me. Yes. Healing for all. Are you burdened down? Are you distressed? 
Your back is against the wall. Well, Bishop, you can preach what you want to preach, but you don't know like I know how long I've been praying. Thank God you, God gave you the ability to endure long enough to pray long enough. Can I say that again? Bishop, you don't know how long I've been going through this hell, honey. Some folks, as soon as they touch the tip of that hell, they died. Thank God you are going through hell, but you have not stopped. You are still going. And one day you go walk out of it. Tell your neighbor, don't stop, don't stop. That's a B-52 for somebody here. Because Bishop, you're talking God is a deliverer. It's a long time I've been going through my sickness. Long time I've been going through my distress. Thank God you have endured for so long. If you were to check the record, many others who have entered up on what you are in today. They are no longer around. Hallelujah. But whilst there is life, are oh, you not saying anything over here? I said, whilst there is life, one of our, one of our brothers in one of our foreign fields, foreign church, is afflicted with a particular sickness for many, many years now. Faithful soul serving God night and day. And his doctor said to him, man, there is something about you I can't understand. He said, every other person who had this disease, this sickness, every single one of them whom I have seen have died long time ago. And you are still alive? There is something about the ability of God. Oh God, help me here. Although you're going through long suffering, but there's something about the ability of the Holy Ghost to keep you going. Amen. Until the breaking of your day, you are going through many weeping nights. But honey, if you go through your weeping nights faithfully, patiently, trusting God is only a matter of time, you will wake up one morning and rise to see the morning of joy. Somebody lift her hand and say, it's coming. You're not saying nothing. You're not saying anything. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and say, Satan is coming. It is coming. My morning of joy is coming. Oh, God Almighty. Hallelujah. And no devil can stop it. For when God gets ready, everything has to move. Everything. Everything. God is unstoppable. Give him praise. I did say unstoppable. So whatever the state of your life today, if it's spiritual or financial or physical or social or psychological or marital or otherwise God said there is healing for all not just all people but all conditions all conditions 39 stripes on his back we have been told on every stripe represents a condition that would need healing. So if you have 40 of them today, you are in trouble. But if you have up to 39, ask your neighbor how much you got. If you have 40 diseases in your body, you've gone overboard a long time. But honey, if you got as many as 39, from your head to your toe, beyond and beneath, healing is there for all. I feel I'm preaching to somebody in this house, giving praise and glory. Hallelujah! Healing for all. 
The psalmist David in Psalm 103, he substantiates all of this. And let me tell you what he says before I continue to dig in this text a little. In Psalm 103, David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. No, we do not have a problem to accept that. When we surrender our life to Jesus Christ, we declared, Thank God I am saved. My sins are gone. How on earth do you know they are gone? How do you know? By believing what the word says. Are you not hearing me? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. By your words you are justified. By your words you are condemned. So the very way we can lift our hands in, su in support of God's word and say, Thank God my sins are forgiven. Thank God I am saved. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The psalmist did not leave it there. He did not only say who forgiveth all thine iniquities, but what he said, who healeth, oh no, you leave me, who healeth some of your diseases. Oh, you know, there's a point where the Christian leave the world and messed up the world, you know, in the way we act and the way we think and the way we do things because we know what it is to speak those things which be not as though they were. Well, you got the pain in your back, yes it is there. You got the cancer in your body, yes it is, yes, it is there. You got the spinal disorder, yes, you got whatever, sugar diabetes, blood pressure, hypertension they call it, whatever it is. But in the light of God's word, in the light of God's word, Faith in you can let you declare. Although the symptoms are there. And although I feel the pain and the effects of the sickness. But by his stripes. Oh no, 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 no. Lift your hand and say by his stripes. I am healed. Well, sister, how are you declaring by his stripes you are healed and you are still sick? By his stripes I am healed. I don't understand you. You'll never understand it. But by his stripe, I am healed. Peter puts it this way. Peter says, we were healed. Not just that we are healed, but 2,000 years ago, we got our healing. It is just for us to appropriate it personally now. Oh, you're not following me here. Tell your neighbor, there is healing for all. I don't love what you say. Just say it too casual. You say it's a bit light. God Almighty. You say it like you're just saying a recitation. Honey, this must come out of your spirit. And when you say that, your, your spirit must respond to something. Mm. This is not what I say to you. It is what God has said to all of us. By his stripes, we are healed. Don't tell me how sick you are. Tell me how healed you are. By faith in Jesus Christ. Somebody praise him in this house. Hallelujah. Don't tell me how weak you are. Tell me how strong you are. By faith in Jesus Christ. Let the weak say. Are you telling a lie? Are you a deceiver? When the weak shout, I am strong. Are you deceiving anybody? Are you telling a lie? No! You ain't deceiving nobody. You're not telling any lies. You are confessing the word of God. And if you confess it over and over and over and over again, 
believe me, it will impact you in a positive way. Somebody wave your hand and say, healing for all. So David says, he forgiveth all thine iniquities. He healeth all thy diseases. He redeemeth thy life from destruction. And he crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. So everywhere you walk, you must walk like a king. Walk like a king's kid. You got a crown on your head. I am crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. God wears a church. I have a crown on my head. It's invisible, but it is there. That's the reason I live the way I live and talk the way I talk and act the way I act because I'm not just a little nobody. I am somebody. I got a crown on my head. I have been crowned by the Holy Spirit with loving kindness and tender mercy. Give him praise in the house. So give him praise and some of you would even open your mouth. Just looking at me like that. Touch your neighbor and say, open your mouth and praise him, neighbor. Praise God. Mm. Well, let me get a little deeper in this message before I bring it down. It is God's will. Some years ago I preached a message, it just come, it comes back to me. Someone was about to lose their house by foreclosure, repossession, could not pay the mortgage. And God gave me a message. Maybe it wasn't specifically designed for that person. But you see, when God sends a message in that one message, there are many messages. You just got to be connected to get your message. And the message was, if it is God's will, it's God's bill. If it is will, it's his bill, his bill. And the sister grabbed to that word and said, dear God, God's will, then it's God's bill. That means he will pay the bill. And I fail to tell you the miracles that happen. They, she might be here listening to me right now. All out of nowhere, the bank just paid off for her house. No, Bishop. Yes. And not only did they just pay it off for the house, they called her in and said, we have money for you. Where's the sister? Stand up and say a truth, no man. She's not inside here. Some of you might know who I'm talking. Paid off for the house. And called her in and said, we have money here for you. And she collected a hundred and a half thousand dollars. Was up. How much, man? Minister Davis remind me, it's housing trust, not the bank, but housing trust. That make it even worse. Housing trust paid off. And call her in. See her dear. Allow me to tell. See her dear. Make sure tell you how much money she gets in her pocket. If it is God's will, it's God's bill. Did they pay off for your house? Did they call you and give you money? Well, shout and praise God. That's the testimony. Somebody shout in the house. Hallelujah. Woo! God, I would to God you would praise him. Some of you should begin to seize upon this miracle testimony and say, God, if you do it for her, you can do it for me. Shake up the devil of poverty and distress. And the devil will tell you, you're going down. Tell him, no, I'm not going down. I'm coming up and I'm coming out. Because my God shall supply all of my knees out of his riches in glory. Somebody praise God and shame the devil. Woo! My God Almighty. Mm. 
So it is God's will for material prosperity and good physical health to be part of your blessing package. Let me say it again. It is God's will for material prosperity and good physical health to be part of your blessing package. So if those two things are left out of your blessing package and all you got is your spiritual blessing, you can only talk in tongues and prophesy and dance and sing and shout and pray and go home and drink hot water for your dinner. God doesn't rejoice in that. Bishop, don't preach like this. They don't love when you preach like this, Bishop. Because they enjoy the distresses of their lives. They love when they have to go to the neighbor and say, <coughs> Beg you look at something now. God said, I want you to lend. Everybody say, lend, 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 lend. Lend and not borrow. And I am not here trying to intimate that this is an automatic overnight process. Oh no, I'm not saying that. I know there are periods and times in our lives when we've got to go through some stuff. But you must not make that particular zone your permanent address. Don't make poverty your permanent address. It's a transient here. You're moving out of here. You are, tell poverty that you are in transit. In transit. This is not where my destination is. I'm in transit. I'm a passenger moving from one location to another. Oh no, pastor. Move, tell your neighbor. Move, 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 move. God says, John says, John was an old father of the church, 3rd John, I think it is, chapter 2. He says, beloved, I love your spirituality, you know, I love how you talk in tongues and prophesy, you fast and you pray. I love it, but he says, beloved, above all things, I would that you prosper and be in health just as all. Your soul is prospering. So when I make the statement that material blessing, material prosperity, and good physical health ought to be part of your blessing package, I'm coming from the Word. Coming from the Word. Wave your hand and say, healing for all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come down shortly, don't you worry. Healing for all. Healing for body and soul it will bring. For I came on business for the king. Church, I came on business for the king he told me to smile he told me to see so I can't just stand The word heal, H-E-A-L, it's a derivative from the Greek word soza, S-O-Z-O, soza. And it speaks of the comprehensive nature of that word. 
It means, among other things, to save. It means to rescue. It means to make whole. W-H-O-L-E. It means to deliver. So this saving business here is not confined only to salvation. Superiors. It is also Sosa. God wants to save you, to deliver you, to make you whole, to bless you. Oh, praise God. Somebody give him praise down there. I see Jesus in Matthew chapter 8. He seemed to have been on a healing spree in Matthew chapter 8. I soon get to the text and close. Don't you worry. What I see in that text, Jesus healed various persons of different conditions and diseases. And I believe it's an example for us today that in any one setting, any one meeting, all kinds of miracles can take place. Oh, you're not with me? Where faith is alive, miracles will happen. In Matthew 8 and in verse, verses 2 through verse 4, Jesus healed a leper. Leprosy comparable to the cancer of our day. Incurable, dead sentence in many instances where the medical fraternity is concerned. But Jesus healed a leper. Verses 5 through 9, a paralyzed man, a paralyzed person was healed. Verses 14 through 17, Peter's mother-in-law was healed of a deadly fever. Right there in that one setting, a healing revival, I believe, was going on. Somebody praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. The danger in verse 28 through 32, the dangerous demoniac of Gadara, that man who lived among the tombs. They could not tie him, nor chain him, nor control him. He also was healed. Are you with me? Look at the extremes. A demonized man possessed from head to toes was healed in the midst of a person healed of a little fever. God makes himself available in the form of your need regardless of the setting. He's not limited. Oh, you're not getting this? So right here today, right now, whatever your condition is, if it's a fever-stricken person beside you, his anointing can heal that fever. And if you have anything more deadly, he can heal you also. Oh, praise God. Lay your hands on the, hand on the person beside you right now and say, Jesus can heal you. Keep your hand there. You may not know what that person is going through. And you might not know the difference of your faith will make. Tell them again, Jesus can heal you. Dear God. You can leave here today. Heal by the power of God. Because he does not bring healing for some. Healing for all oh, glory. Oh glory. Now lift up your hands and give him praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Somebody shout the high praise. In that one meeting, leprosy was healed, paralysis was healed, fever was healed, demon possessed man was delivered. I see awesome power of Almighty God. They all were healed because His presence was present to heal them all. Some of you, oh, I feel the power of God hitting somebody. 
Some of you do not know the blessedness, the blessing, the benefits of being in the presence of Almighty God. In an atmosphere like the one we have been in since morning. Mm. It could happen like what happened in Matthew chapter 8. Every condition among God's people can be healed. Because he told me to tell you there is healing for all. Ten minutes and I'll stop. The most is Let me show you something. A kind of healing that was done to bring about economic and financial prosperity. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22, Elisha was in the city of Jericho. And the men of the city said to him, the situation of the city is pleasant as my Lord said it. But we have two problems. The water is bad and the ground is barren. Are you following me anybody? I'm showing you a healing that was designed to bring about economic and financial prosperity for the people of Jericho. They reported that all the situation of the city, they were pleasant. But the water was bad. The ground was barren. Elisha said, I won't leave you like this. Bring me some salt. Oh, glory. The man of God went out and he sprinkled the salt in the water and up on the ground. And he declared, thus said the Lord God, I have healed these waters. And from today, there shall be no more death, nor drought, nor barrenness. Because God has healed the waters and healed the land. Now tell me, intelligent people of God, what kind of economy any nation can have without water and without good soil? Are you not with me here? When the man of God healed the water, and when he healed the ground, he was in essence saying, get ready for your economic prosperity. Crops are going to grow. Crops are going to do well. If God healed water and healed ground, land, for economic purposes, do you not think he wants to heal you? A vessel? An instrument? Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, no. Tell your neighbor he wants to heal you. Dear God, if you're not healthy and strong, oh, oh, how are you going to do the work of God the way you want to do it? Hallelujah. Give him another praise. You know, I might be naive in saying this, but it would appear as though some folks take pleasure in their sickness because they have what to complain about, what to mope about and to seek pity. I don't want nobody have to pity me because I'm sick. You're not saying anything. Rejoice over me in good health. I don't want no pity in no sickness. I mean, not advocating any sickness. Uh, people come and say, Lord, Pastor, I'm sorry for you, sir, Pastor. But may I pray for you, you know, Pastor? I want to be well. I want to be strong. And when 
the devil rock and knock at me. I'm going to let him know that I know who I am in Christ. Now let me say something that I should not say that some of you wouldn't want me to say and I'm going to get messed up for this. In seeking to preserve your health, there are some things that you should not do. Do not be careless with your health. Don't be. Be mindful of your health. Because I'm here to say if you lose it, it's not very easy. So some things that you don't really have to heed, don't heed them. That's what you don't want me to say. Don't eat them. Don't eat them. Tell your neighbor, don't eat them. Some of you love food too much. God knows it's truth. You just can't resist food. You eat just about anything, anytime, anywhere. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right, let's, let's move on because you get mad with me right now. All them little guys that grunt all over the place. Some of you love them too much. All right. Eat small portions of whatever you eat if you have to eat them. Small portions. God, if I say one more thing now, I have to put down the mic and run. <laughs> Hold on, let me say it. There, there is an old, an old saying or thinking, especially those who are from the rural areas. Country, come a town. When you go back to country, you want good to go back to country big and fat. And when you go to country big and fat, them say, Lord, what a way life agree with you. You are near life a town. Look how you're big and fat. Please forgive me. Honey. All right, I say no more. So you, nothing is wrong to go to country slim and trim and healthy and feel well. You're big and fat and you're sick. It don't make no sense. Tell your neighbor there is healing for all. I close. Jesus declared his ministry. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, he declared a sixfold way in which God, for which God has anointed him. And one of those ways that Jesus declared that God has anointed him is to heal the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted. Healing socially and psychologically broken-hearted when i prepared this message the holy spirit said to me when you get here this is where you must bring it down many persons are suffering with broken hearts how was your heart broken who broke your heart and today the psychological wounds are deep. You are physically well and able. But you are disoriented psychologically. You just cannot keep it together as you ought to. Because those wounds are there. 
wounds caused by some members of your family. Some of you were physically abused. Others were verbally abused. Can I say some were sexually abused. And the wounds are there. Wounds are there. You don't know how to treat with it. God says he will heal you from your broken heart. Today he proclaims healing for all. Everybody say all. I close. Jeremiah asked a question in chapter 8 and verse 22. The question, some of you know. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people restored, recovered? Is there no bomb? Is there no physician? He goes on to say in the same portion there that the distress cry of the daughters of my people can be heard. He says, I am black with astonishment. Fear has gotten hold on me. Is there no bomb in Gilead? I'm here to tell you today that there is a bomb in this Gilead. I'm here to tell you that there is a resident physician. Not a visiting physician. He resides 24-7. And if you would but recognize his presence. If you would but recognize his power. If you would but recognize that in the package that he has. All your interests are wrapped up in there. And if you do like the woman in Mark 5, despise all the things around you and the circumstances that are working against you and purpose in your heart that if I could but touch. God, I'm reaching somebody now. If I could but touch the helm of his garment, I know, I know, I know, I shall be made whole. Praise God, the Holy Ghost is touching somebody. I know the circumstances is weighing you down. The circumstance is weighing you down. I know the problems are magnified even above the solution. But turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And something is about to happen. Because there is a bomb in Gilead. There is a physician. There is healing for body. There is healing for soul. There is all kinds of healing in the house for you today my god almighty somebody lift up your hands in this anointing say something in this anointing anointing coming down right now oh echo motion distress cries are being heard I spend all my money at the doctor. I get no better. I grew worse. I tried the bush doctor. I tried home remedy. I mixed up everything that people recommend. I drank this and that and the other. I've been here and there and everywhere. Bishop is not try. I have not tried. It's time to try Jesus. It's time to try Jesus. It's time to say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No 
know how to help. I know. God, I feel the Holy Ghost coming in on somebody. If you draw yourself from me, tell me. Where shall I go? I bring you the word of comfort. I bring you the word of assurance. I bring you the word that is guaranteed, sealed and settled in heaven. That by his stripe you are healed. And that there is healing for all people. For all conditions. All the time, regardless of the circumstances, mm -hmm. rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your soul. Rise and In the name of Jesus, he will cleanse you. And man, lift up your hands and sing the song now. Rise and spiritual. Financial. Let faith arise. Thank you. 
My God Almighty, my God, oh. hear me well. I want all my unsaved friends now listen to me. All the unsaved persons in this audience and all the backsliders, I want you to take your seat, please. Sit down. You're not a Christian or you're a backslider. Please just take your seat. And I only want to see Christians standing at this time. All the unsaved and all the backsliders, sorry that you're in that state right now. But just sit down for a few moments. But I don't see anybody move. We have all Christians in the house. All right, let's do the reverse for a while. All the Christians sit down, please. Now let me ask all the unsaved and the backsliders to stand. Okay. We have so many people here. It's kind of difficult to differentiate when the number is so vast between. I'll ask for praying this message. The Holy Spirit took me to a particular portion which I'm going to demonstrate right now. All those who are standing, you need prayer. If you so choose, I'd love for you to walk from your seat, please, and come stand down here. I won't keep you for long. You could stand straight across from the window, straight across. To make it a little freer for everybody. Just the unsaved and the backsliders who are standing, not the Christians. I don't want any Christian to come down here. Not at this time. Stretch it straight across. Anywhere there's an empty space, just stand in there. No, I don't believe this. You're still not cooperating. I had about 80 persons stand us unsaved. And backsliders and now we have almost 300 people coming down here okay take it easy anywhere there's an empty place just stand, just stand, just stand.
it's, a, it's warm, okay? The AC not running. Where there's a empty place, just spread it out so you can have hair between you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus. 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 zeroed in on me and what I'm doing here is under divine instructions whether you believe it or no he took me to James chapter 5 verse 16 it says confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that he may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person, righteous man, woman, boy, girl, availeth much. Now the point is this. You can confess your faults. Unsaved, like everybody can. But you are not now in a spiritual state condition position to pray one for another that they might be healed because that prayer for that healing comes from a righteous person are you with me the, effer the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much we are going to pray for you right now. All of these ministers stand here. It's going to take one minute to pray a prayer. I did say one minute to pray over each of you. Can't keep you here all day. It's warm. Okay. So we have two, four, seven, eight. One minute they are going to speak a word of healing in your life. As unbelieving, unsaved at this time. If you believe almighty God. The effectual fervent prayer of these men and women of God will avail much for you today. Now close your eyes, please. And bow your head, please. And hold hand with, hold, hold hand with somebody if you can, if you, if you can do so. One prayer over all of you. Every one of us is going to pray. 
and you remain there. A minute of prayer over these unsaved for God to heal them. Go ahead, please. God of might, God of miracle, God of the supernatural, the God who holds the universe in his hand. We approach your mercy seat right now. Your people are in your presence, God. Every stronghold, every powers of hell, every unclean spirit, every sickness, every disease, I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. Loose them, God. Loose them in Jesus' name. Stay there. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray and ask you even right now, Lord, that you will reach out uh, those nails card hand. Somebody need deliverance. Somebody need healing. Somebody needs salvation. We speak it uh, in their lives even right now. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We lose them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, do it right now, we pray, God. And we tell you thanks. Uh, we worship you for deliverance and for victory, for salvation and healing. For Somebody right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Come on. Hallelujah. The atmosphere. Oh God. In the name of Jesus. Upon the authority of your words we come today. In full agreement. Concerning every soul that is standing before you this day. Oh God we pray that. They will receive the salvation package which contain healing, deliverance, and salvation. We release it to every soul this day. They receive it in Jesus' name. Oh, Amen. Lord, you said we must approach your throne room of grace and mercy. So we approach your throne room of grace and mercy right now. In the name of Jesus and every business person who stand at this altar right here right now lord you know their individual circumstances you know it, jesus and you is a one-stop jesus as your servant does preach healing for all heal the soul heal the body heal the mind in jesus name my god Your word has been preached, and the people have heard your word. You told us that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. Jesus. And Lord God, we come to you in behalf of these people that stand Jesus. before this sainted altar. Jesus. Oh God, that healing, healing will be their portion this moment. Thank in the name of Jesus Christ, from the crown of their head to the very soul of their feet, will be delivered and loved and set them free in Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah! 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 Lord, we pull them every stronghold of the enemy. We pull them down. We pull them down. We pull down stress. We pull down stress. We pull down stress, God. Hallelujah. And I pray you loose. 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 this purpose you came into the world that you might destroy the works of the devil Lord there are your people standing around this sacred altar God they are held captive by the devil bound and chained in sin but upon the authority of your word, that same anointing that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, we receive.
release the anointing upon them right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare your people loose. In the name of Jesus, we declare your people delivered and set free. In the name of Jesus, loose them, God. Loose them, loose them, loose them. In the name of Jesus. Eternal God and our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you would tell us, Lord, if you believe in God, believe also in Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we present your people before you right now, Lord Jesus. You know them by name, you know them by nature, oh God Almighty. We ask you, Lord, just breathe a fresh breath upon them, Lord Jesus. Anoint them, oh God, so they can give their life to you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I pray for salvation. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. I pray for blessing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, great God Almighty. Loose them right now, Jesus. Holy Ghost of God. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. Set them free in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you and I call it done. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to Jesus. Lift up your hands on the altar. Open your mouth and begin to thank God. The effectual fervent prayer. Come on, open your mouth and begin to praise God. Open your mouth and praise Him. Open your mouth and thank Him. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him, thank Him. Something has happened. Something is happening. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. The healing power of Jesus. Comprehensive healing package. In, oh yes, my God Almighty. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. there for just three more minutes. All the Christians stand, please. There you are. There's a Christian standing beside you. Each of you hold on one with the other. There's a Christian beside you. Hold on. Face each other if you can. And begin to pray for that Christian right now that God will heal that person from whatever. Come on. Face them. Face them if you can. Begin to pray for that Christian. Come on. one for another open your mouth and pray Christian yes release the power release the power real oh God almighty oh yes 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 oh Release the power. Release your faith. Somebody praying for you. A righteous person. In an atmosphere supernaturally charged by the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory! Hallelujah! Raise your right hand, everybody, if you can. 
Father, in Jesus' name, we seal through the blood of the everlasting covenant every power that has been prayed, every decree that has been made in the name of Jesus. I pray that heaven's package will be delivered, delivered expressly to every person in this audience. In the name of Jesus, wrapped and packaged and delivered by the Holy Ghost with every need supplied, every need supplied. I speak it for one, I speak it for all by the authority of Jesus Christ. I call it done. Seal, delivered, healing for all, healing from all. Glory to Jesus. Clap your hands now and shout the high praise. God Almighty. Clap your, I did say clap your hands. I did say shout the high praise. Dedicate this temple to you. 